Our first myth today came via request, and it's the claim that the band name of KISS is actually an acronym for the phrase Knights in Satan's Service. Simply put, this is completely false. When KISS began rising to fame in the early 70s, due to their stage show, their overall image, and the style of music that they played, it's no surprise that a lot of conservative groups started to make up a long list of stories about the band. And this was one of them. The actual origin of the band name KISS is far less dramatic, as Gene Simmons has said many times that the band was just driving around trying to come up with different band names, and they liked the name KISS. It's that simple, nothing more. For our second myth today, let's explore the story that the product that many people know as Whiteout or Liquid Paper was actually invented by the parents of one of the members of the Monkees. Believe it or not, this one is true, and the woman in question is the mother of Mike Nesmith. Back in 1951, Mike's mother was working as a bank secretary in Texas, and to correct her typing errors, she came up with the formula and then started selling it to other secretaries in the area. A few years later, she began marketing the product on her own, and at the end of the 1970s, she sold the company to Gillette for $50 million. Maybe a bit strange, but absolutely true. For the final myth today, let's look at the claim that says Frank Sinatra actually recorded one of his biggest hits on a moment's notice in a single session. Oddly enough, this is totally true, as even Sinatra hit rough patches throughout his career. You see, back in the mid-1960s, Sinatra was already far from the huge name that he had been only a few years earlier. And with competition coming in from new singers and new genres, Old Blue Eyes needed a hit big time. Then, a small film called A Man Could Get Killed was released, and there was an instrumental on the soundtrack that was catching on quickly, and at that time, somebody was working on lyrics in English for the film's US release. Now, Frank Sinatra already knew that singers like Bobby Darin and Jack Jones had already recorded their own versions of this song, and the Jones version was set to be released only three days later. Sinatra knew this song was gonna be a hit, and since he still had a lot of power and pull, he found himself a backing orchestra, booked himself some late night studio time, and recorded a little song called Strangers in the night. Sinatra's version was released literally the next day and it quickly topped the charts. And by the time the Jack Jones and Bobby Darin versions came out, they were already massively overshadowed by what stands now as one of Sinatra's biggest hits. But in the end, this one was recorded in as much a rush as you can possibly consider, and it just shows how deep an understanding of musical culture and the music industry Sinatra had. So those are the myths for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Be sure to check back here every Thursday as I delve into some of the coolest stories in music history, and be here every day for all the music news, reviews, and knowledge you'll ever need. Oh!